Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about how protein are produced um, inside a cell and in a previous video um, it was about uh, the second chapter of the selfish gene I talked about how the world obeys a law of uh, the survival of the uh, stable and I talked about hemoglobin molecules or proteins. Hemoglobin is a protein that looks very complicated. It looks like a thin thorn bush. And, but different from a thorn bush, when you take 10 very different thorn bushes, uh, well, when I say very different, I mean, I mean that it is not the same thorn bushes. You take 10 different thorn bushes and look at them. Well, they might look similar because they are all thorn bushes, but if you look at tiny details, they're all gonna look very different. But hemoglobin molecules, you take 10 of them, you look at them, they all look exactly the same because the hemoglobin molecules, it follows a rule of survival of the stable um, which means non-stable things break down into stable things and now this hemoglobin molecule because of electromagnetism uh, each little parts making up the hemoglobin uh, mainly the amino acids and those have tiny little different charges and stuff so uh, when this protein is, protein is produced it just scrunches up into one very dense looking a uh, dense thorn bushy looking protein and now but how is how really is a hemoglobin molecule made as i said we know that uh, if you have a long thingy, long polymer of amino acids, proteins are made out of amino acids. And if you have a long polymer of amino acids and just let it go, and it will just make it, uh, it will just scrunch up into a uh, protein. I'm talking about hemoglobins here, but how is the long polymer made? And if we're talking about eukaryotes, which are cells that have a nucleus, and these eukaryotes are cells that make up uh, us and other multicellular beings, uh, these cells move around proteins, maybe uh, sometimes into uh, others, uh, other cells into out the outside of the cell how do how does that happen we're gonna talk about that in this video so as I said protein are polymers of amino acids if you get a protein and just find uh, two ends and pull on each other maybe it will not at some points but let's say it just makes a straight line you would uh, you would be able to see, well, I don't know about seeing because it's very small, but uh, maybe, uh, let's just say that you use a uh, electron microscope. Well, you would get to observe a little amino acids in uh, making up a chain. And these are stuck together this polymer is called a polypeptide and this long polypeptide as i was saying loads and loads of times in the intro we take the polypeptide and now let it go it will fold in the exact same way it was before and it will fold like that and uh, uh same sequence of amino acids making up the chain you let it, let it go, it will always fold in the same way and produce the exact same protein. And 
that's how proteins work and so firstly amino acids how do you get them into the cell or does the cell produce it um, amino acids how we get them are simple you just eat meat or something maybe beans or food that has stuff that we call protein in it we eat them and then it gets digested and it breaks down into uh, amino acids and uh, the amino acids are uh, get sucked up in the uh, oh, sucked up after getting digested you just eat stuff that uh, eat food that uh, like meat fish or beans or some other food stuff that we think as protein being in it well there are some protein in it and if we eat them it uh, it gets all digested and the protein are broken into little particles and those are amino acids and it just gets sucked up after being all digested into amino acids and it goes through our blood and gets uh, and then gets um, gets to all the cells that need amino acids they suck the amino acids up and use uses them inside the cell and now how the amino acid chains how the polypeptides are built is very interesting and now there needs to be a instruction to build this polypeptide and uh, you need to build a polypeptide and the instructions are written in the DNA and the uh, think of DNA as let's say it's some sort of song player it's a mp3 player is that what it's called um, some sort of old school song playing thingy me bob we have that the hardware is dna the hardware is called the dna and the songs in that are the genome the actual information and the individual songs in the uh, in which in the cells case it's the individual proteins that it can produce those are uh, in the individual songs we can see them as genes we call them genes the individual segments that make up actual individual proteins those are genes so genes are a little part in a genome and a and a genome is a, infor, a genome is information written inside of dna dna is the hardware containing the information called genome and uh, most prokaryotes or bacteria normal normally um, most of the bacteria are prokaryotes and these prokaryotes carry around uh, a single gene which is formed in a loop and eukaryotes which are cells in multicellular beings or some non-bacteria uh, single celled uh, life thing things uh, these have chromosomes which are which are big uh, big molecules are of DNA all mm, uh, all meshed up and uh, mashed up and eukaryotes carry two copies of the same uh, of the same DNA and we have 46 total chromosomes and because we carry two same copies of DNA uh, of chromosomes um, 
individual different uh, chromosomes, so we have 23 of them. We have 23 different chromosomes. And the genes are the thing that makes species species. Each individual species are those species because of all the genes. The genes uh, make up the species, the, it makes up individuals and the genes are passed on to the next generation of that species and so on. And these, so these genes, the genome, the DNA, the hardware containing the information is very, very important. So prokaryotes, uh, they don't have a nucleus but they put a lot of protective proteins around the DNA so it can't get hurt or dam uh, it can't get damaged and mess up the whole cell. And eukaryotes go further and build a nucleus to trap the, uh, trap the DNA inside of. They put the cro all the uh, chromosomes inside of the, a thing called nucleus, a protective barrier, so things can't come in and mess up the, the DNAs, can't mess up the DNA. But if we are using the DNA to build proteins, you have to read them and you have to read them and then transport them to something that would make the information into a actual protein. But how is that done? In, 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 while transporting, it might get damaged. It's very dangerous. So what, you, what we use in this uh, case, what the cells use here, is a thing called messenger RNA or mRNA. What mRNA is, is it's a strip of RNA um, that kind of looks like a DNA, uh, but it's not the double helix shape, it's just a single strip. And it, it also has the information in it, but it's more like a copy of the DNA. It's kind of a copy of DNA and you make the M uh, messenger RNA, mRNA, by copying the DNA and so now we have a strip of mRNA. We send it, send it to a thing that makes proteins from the mRNA that reads the information and does actually does the job. We send the RNA to that thing, the uh, that protein, and it makes the proteins that the mRNA is making it do. So this is how it all works, and we're gonna look. At DNA a little bit more. And DNA is made made out of. It looks like a double helix shape. Kind of looks like uh, going like that. And there are little thing uh, little things like that looks like ladders connecting in the middle of the two double helix strips. And uh, if we break down the DNA. Um, this is a very little part of the DNA. Uh, these things are all, uh, these things make up the DNA like the one here and then one stuck to here. Actually, let's erase this uh, phosphate. So, Now, one little part of DNA looks a bit like this. There's a base and there are five carbon, uh, carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five. And it goes from three to, uh, three to five, like uh, in this way. And it keeps on, uh, it keeps on kind of 
following this sequence of three, two, five, three, four, five, and and then well, there's of course one uh, another one of these things over here, and there's a, gonna be a base, and it's it keeps on going, and these bases. There are five total bases. Um, it is it is adenine, uh, guanine, and cytosine, and uh, thymine, and uracil. I am not sure if I am pronouncing these correct, but uh, these are all the familiar A, G, C, T, U. Well, U might be not familiar, but the A, G, C, T is kind of well known for making up the DNA. These bases are the A, G, C, T in the DNA. These A4 AGCT are used in the DNA bases. And uh, we're going to talk about uracil later. And uh, and of course, this is a single strip of DNA. There is a copy, kind of a copy of that. Sort of mirrored, but not really mirrored. The, uh, over here as well. Just imagine as uh, putting a mirror in, uh, over here and mirroring it, mirroring it over here. It's over here, but the this three, four, five sequence is flipped. So we mirror it and then flip it. So for over here it goes three to five like this. Over here, it goes uh, three, two, five like this. Um, it's kind of uh, It's basically the same, but flip twice or roll them, uh, kind of turn them like this, on 180 degrees or whatever. Uh, now these bases are these four molecules. And these bases are the thing that has information in it. These carbon thingy that connect, uh, are just for connecting all the things together. And the actual information is stored in the AGCT. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. And how a messenger RNA is made. Uh, how is a messenger RNA made? So, uh, well, let's say there is a gene over here, and there is a thing, a thing called a. There is a thing called sigma factor, and this is some sort of protein sitting on the DNA. Well, uh, actually, before we talk about this, how am, is a uh, messenger RNA made here? I'm talking about bacteria, prokaryotes. We're going to talk about eukaryotes a little bit later, but it's kind of similar but different at the same time. Firstly, we're going to need a sigma factor, which is a protein sitting on the DNA. And now there is a thing called RNA polymerase. This RNA polymerase flies into the uh, sigma factor, and the sigma factor kind of picks the polymerase, the RNA polymerase protein up. By the way, these two protein are the two main protein making up the RNA. The two most important uh, proteins two most important molecules uh, for uh, making the RNA, uh, messenger RNA. And so the 
sigma factor picks up the RNA polymerase and kind of slams it down into the DNA. Kind of splits the DNA in half uh, following this line of the kind of splits the bases stuck together in half and puts the uh, uh, puts the uh, uh, polymerase in there and kind of shows it the angles using I guess chemicals and so the polymerase in this case we're gonna think of uh, over here is three I mean let's say it's five two three and it's three two five over here the uh, DNA is split into two where well there's gonna be bases like that bases down here as uh, uh, also and the polymerase is going to be in here and it is going to follow uh, it is going to make a copy of the strand of DNA of the 5 to 3 part the 5 to it is going to copy the strand of DNA going from 5 to 3 uh, using the 3 to 5 because if we copy this uh, oh A has a, a, a before we talk about this, uh, uh, adenine has a, a kind of affinity to thymine and guanine has a affinity for uh, cytosine. So it is going to use these and use the kind of the affinity thing to copy this. So to copy this, we have to copy this thing. And if we copy this, well, when I say copy for the uh, for the three to five one, it's not really copying, but putting things together and making RNA. So it goes this way, and there's gonna be much, much, much more DNA that way. It go it's gonna move, and it's gonna. Put, well, if this is a C, we put a, oh, if this is a C, we put um, G on it, and now if this is a G, we're going to put C on it. If this is a T, we're going to put A on it. If this is an A, we are not going to put T on it, we're going to put uracil on it. We're gonna put put U on it. Uh, U is in, used instead of T, and I think the reason is because T is the only base that does not have a affinity for a sugar called ribose, and I think that is that might be important, but I don't really know about this one. Uh, so. Uracil is used instead of thymine, but there's no really big, not really a big problem here. And so it reads, it reads the, it reads these and puts the things together, and it kind of moves along, and the RNA is kind of, kind of sticks out of the protein. It makes the, it makes all these and kind of. Uh, I don't know if there's a good, uh, thing, a uh, good analogy to this one. Yeah, it just goes along and makes the RNA and, uh, spits them out, kind of. And now there's going to be a stop sign somewhere, and the... Uh, RNA polymerase is gonna go over the stop sign and it will stop and get out of the gene and 
spit out the RNA completely. And now the RNA is gonna travel. And so the RNA is kinda getting spitted out and the RNA is gonna meet the in the book I was reading, the R, uh, the ribosome was kind of drawn like this, and the RNA is gonna meet a protein called ribosome, a very very important protein. So maybe ribosome is called ribosome because it 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 uses a sugar called ribose and maybe uracil is used because of it has a affinity for ribose but as i said don't know about this one but now the rna uh the the rna meets the ribosome now it's gonna read the rna the ribosome is gonna read the rna and it will uh and it will kind of put the proteins together using the uh, using some other stuff and before we talk about all this I'm gonna put some pictures on the screen and it shows that uh, it shows what well what sequence of uh, the bases equal uh, uh, make up what sorts of proteins and uh, feel free to pause the video and read this stuff. You're gonna notice there's three sequences um, make up stop signals and the other ones are all for protein and there are a total of 64 sequences because it's four times four times four because there's four sorts of bases that can be in a RNA and there's a, a one sequence of our uh, the bases or uh, have three bases in them so four times four times four well 64 including the stop signals and this whole thing is called a genetic code and the sequence of threes that make oh, what sequence of three bases make up what Pro, uh, what amino acids and th this is the genetic code and it is it is universal it is used in every living creature on earth and also it is it does not overlap it does not overlap the information so it does if we have three uh, if we have three bases here and three bases here these are stuck together no uh kind of gaps between those and it does not overlap making making it kind of hard harder the information does not overlap while there being no gaps in uh, gaps between each other this is the genetic code and now there are also thing a thing called transfer rna or this one's gonna be tRNA and tRNA kind of looks as shown in the book kind of like this we have the genetic code um, made up of the three bases and these three are gonna be kind of did it look a bit like this it looks like some alien creature with three eyes some sort of weird venus tr fly trap but uh, there's a there's gonna be a amino there's gonna be a amino acid stuck into that tRNA I don't think this is a accurate representation of a tRNA but uh, maybe I'll Google it and put it in the screen. Uh, now, this tRNA 
there is a whole, a kind of a whole thingy in the uh, in the ribosome for the tRNAs. Let's just let's just draw a T for the tRNAs. Now, so the ribosome is gonna read the there's gonna be tRNA uh, near the ribosome and the ribosome is gonna read it and let's kind of draw over here now so let's say the let's say the RNA says the mRNA says over here well maybe A C U and if so the tRNA that has the sequence of now T G A I mean not T it's not T it's U the tRNA that has the sequence of U G A Uh, that has the amino acid oh I just looked at the uh, genetic code and somehow I just randomly picked the one that has the sequence stop well uh, I guess uh, this one is gonna um, have the information of uh, stopping the whole making the protein thingy it kind of works like that. We have a sequence of three bases and the T, uh, tRNA that is fit for that sequence, it, uh, it's gonna stick together because of the affinity and it's gonna leave the amino acid behind and I guess the tRNA will go around and pick up the other amino acids that are coming into the cell because we ate something, I guess. Actually, we're talking about prokaryotes here. So, the prokaryote ate something, and it it was maybe protein, and it's gonna the tRNA is kind of stick onto the amino acid, and maybe come back and do the protein building thing again. And now, so the, the amino acid is now stuck onto kind of building up using this so the RNA uh, goes uh, the RNA is read by going through the ribosome and the ribosome puts the tRNA and the mRNA together and stick uh, and takes off the amino acid stuck onto the tRNA and builds uh, puts that uh, sticks that onto the amino acid that was uh, that was taken off of the tRNA right beforehand. So this is gonna uh, repeat until the uh, until the RNA that says stop comes by. So then the uh, then I guess the ribosome will stop making the protein and let the protein go then the protein will uh, will mash up into uh, it'll mash up into a it'll tangle up into a uh, protein thorn bush and it'll float around freely in the cell in the prokaryote cell yeah that's that is how a protein is made that is how a protein is made inside of a, prokary a prokaryote. How about a eukaryote? Like us, we are beings that are made out of eukaryotes. It is quite similar but uh, quite different too. So, well, in eukaryotes, well, prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, so everything just happens near the DNA but 
Eukaryotes, they do have a nucleus and the nucleus is for protecting the DNA. So the making of the mRNA does happen inside of the nucleus, but the, but the uh, translation, the transcription of the uh, DNA has happened uh, is ha uh, uh, happens inside of the nucleus, but the translation of the RNA happens outside of the nucleus. So, well, the first part is similar, basically the same. It uses a RNA polymerase to make up the messenger RNA, and now since in eukaryotes sends it outside of the uh, nucleus. It travels and meets a ribosome and the ribosome translates a little bit of the RNA and kind of goes to, uh, tries to go outside of, uh, more to the outside of the cell. And there are now, a kind of a weird thing about eukaryotes is that you have to, the eukaryotes edit the mRNA before getting it translated. So as the RNA, as the messenger RNA travels out to the outside of the uh, nucleus, well, there is a part of it called the intron. And the intron is a useless part. If it is inside the RNA, the ribosome cannot produce a protein. The intron has to be uh, the intron has has to be uh, cut out. So there is a protein called spliceosome, and the spliceosome cuts out the intron and and then the, and puts back the other two parts that the cut a part that has been cut, which are not introns together, and it sticks back together. And now it is a functional messenger RNA. This travels to the ribosome now. Now the RNA goes to the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, I hope I said it correct. And now, the in the endoplasmic reticulum, there is a bunch of ribosomes in there. And now, the ribosomes uh, in the eukaryotes uh, clamps down on the uh, right downstream of the guanine cap. So if we have a RNA like this, and this is a guanine, the ribosome will clamp right down here and start, uh, and will, it will start uh, translating the messenger RNA into protein. And, in, well, technically into a polypeptide, but Soon the polypeptides are uh, folded into the protein, so it translates the RNA into the polypeptide right downstream from the guanine cap. And well, I forgot to mention this while explaining the prokaryote and prokaryote ribosomes clamp down on the part where a part which is a special starting sequence it clamps down on a special se a special starting sequence of bases uh, a lot of the prokaryotes use the sequence of agg agg i think so the ribosome starts translating the messenger RNA and 
Now, there are some protein complexes right next to the ribosomes. Uh, now, these proteins start uh, starts sniffing the it starts sniffing the protein, the polypeptide that the ribosome is making. Now, if there is a part of the polypeptide that is um, fit for some protein, if there is, the protein releases some chemical that makes the ribosome uh, get stuck onto the wall of the endoplasmic reticulum. It, uh, the ribosome gets stuck onto that and the and the uh, polypeptide that has been produced is uh, gets transported into the kind of the end of the endoplasmic reticulum, the ER for short, uh, and the membrane of the uh, ER is kind of the membrane kind of grabs the uh, proteins that has been produced, grabs it, and uh, and then falls off the uh, ER and moves into the Golgi apparatus. So, if this is the endoplasmic reticulum, and here is the nucleus, these are not to scale, and now these kind of bubbles made out of the membra membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum. Well, there's going to be protein around here, and it's there's protein going to uh, proteins are going to be in there, and there's a uh, Golgi apparatus, kind of looks like a honeycomb to me, and moves into the uh, Golgi, apparat uh, Golgi apparatus and the inside the Golgi apparatus the proteins that has been made are sorted um, like uh, it gets sorted into different groups um, or, or according to where it needs to go to so some will uh, would need to go to the uh, go near the nucleus, maybe back into the uh, maybe back into the ER. Maybe it was a protein that sniffs out the uh, proteins that needs to go into the Golgi apparatus, um, and some might go to the part of the cell where. The protein are uh, protein are broken down into smaller pieces. Some might go to uh, go even out uh, even outside of the cell. But well, now well they are sorted in the, that way according to where they need to go, and then the uh, myosins move those proteins inside of bubbles kind of in packages moves the moves the and well they get sorted and then myosins transport those protein inside little bubble packages into where uh, where they need to go to and that is how the the proteins produce uh, produced move around and well when I say move around, get transported to where they need to go. And some uh, don't get transported like that. And the, uh, and the sniffing, uh, sniffing proteins don't find anything out. Uh, don't detect anything that needs to go to the uh, Golgi apparatus. So uh, if so, the ribosome just moves out of the whole uh, whole endoplasmic reticulum and just it, it becomes a free ribosome which is a ribosome that has produced a protein 
to just float around in the empty space of the cell. When I say empty, it's gonna be mostly water and some other free proteins. It happens like that. The ribosome comes out of the whole thing and uh, and then makes a protein and it floats around doing stuff and yeah that is how proteins are made inside of eukaryotes so i think that was about all i wanted to talk about today and uh we uh, we talked about how prokaryotes make uh proteins and about ribosomes weird looking transfer uh, RNAs and RNA polymerases, messenger RNA and DNA and you, how eukaryotes make uh, protein and move them around. And if you have any questions or if I was wrong about something here, please leave a comment down below and Bye.